I want to demonstrate a technique for working with imbalance between the two eyes. So normally when you look at something, if you have normal sight, both eyes will be able to point towards that thing and the images that you get from both eyes will go to the brain and be synthesized into one composite image. If you have challenging situations, for example, one eye is perhaps not focusing as well as the other, or one eye is wandering a bit, as in squint, um, wall eye, whatever you call it, or one eye is slightly suppressed, so the brain is not getting the full strength of the image from that eye. In those circumstances, balance is disrupted and you probably find it hard, if it's at all possible, to get a 3D impression of what you're looking at. So the equipment, what I've got here is uh, two cardboard tubes, six inches long. A toilet roll middle's not long enough. These have been cut from a middle from a, a kitchen roll or a, a kitchen foil or something like that. Six inches long, you need two, so you can look through them like so. And then the thing you do with these to start with is you find a blank surface to look at. Maybe the sky, maybe a wall that doesn't have anything on it. Because you're not actually going to look at the surface, you're going to look at the circle that you get at the end of the tube. And use them like a binocular, look through. And to start with, you point the ends away from each other. And then what you should get is two distinct circles. One eye is seeing one image and the other eye is seeing the other image. And because you're pointing the points, pointing the ends away from each other, there shouldn't be any challenge and you should be able to see these two. The challenge comes when you start to move these ends together. And what you're getting then is the two circles are moving towards each other. And with normal sight, you should be able to move the ends of these tubes until they're touching, and then you will get a single image which is composed of those two separate circles combined in your brain. So here I have a rough simulation of the effect you'd get. I've got two sheets of semi-transparent paper and I've cut holes in the paper. So when you're looking through your two tubes and the ends are pointing away from each other, you will get an image of two circles like that. When you start to move the ends together, whoops, <laughs> these circles will move closer to each other. So you might have it like that. You might get them to touch. You get them to overlap a little bit and get them to overlap completely. If you have a challenge in one eye, you may well find that when you point the ends of the tubes away like that, you get two images. But as soon as you get to a certain point, one of those images will become very faint or it will disappear or fly away and you only get the other one. If you come to a point like that, then you stop at that point you close your eyes and you rest and you do some balancing techniques. When you've done the balancing techniques and had a rest, you come back, you start again from where you were with the ends of the tubes far away and gradually move them close together. Being really relaxed, because if you're tense, it'll encourage the problems that you started with. And as soon as you get to the point where the problem happens, you stop again, close your eyes, rest, and do some more balancing techniques. So this is a simple balancing technique routine. I need something to throw and catch. I've got a bean bag here. Bean bags don't bounce like balls and so they're easier to keep control of. And I have two pairs of sunglasses and I've made them into eye shades. So one pair has the left side popped out and the other pair has the right side popped out and the side that's 
still there. I've painted black on the other side so it's really opaque so when I put this on it's really like an eye patch. The only difference between this and an eye patch is with this I've still got a little bit of peripheral vision on this side so if my right eye wanted to see something it's got a little bit of something to see and it's not going to start to strain. Okay so this is the three items I need and the routine is I'm going to start by throwing and catching the beanbag one hand to the other hand. Oops. The point is not to do it perfectly but just to do it. Okay fine Then I'm going to throw and catch it on the right side only and then I'm going to throw and catch it on the left side only. And then with both hands together. And what I'm doing is I'm using both sides of my brain to do this. And I'm using my hands in conjunction with my eyes. I'm not thinking about my eyes, I'm just, you know, having fun throwing and catching the beanbag. It's not about trying to do something with your eyes, that would defeat the object. So the next thing is, think about which eye is more challenging. In my case it's my left eye. So I'm going to actually start with my right eye, which will find it a little bit easier. And I'm going to start with the easy side, which is probably the right side. And then the left side. And then side to side. And then both together. I'm going to rest my eyes actually a little bit because I can feel something going on here where my eye was shaded and we don't want any tension to creep in at all. <sighs> so deep breaths, let the eyes go. And then I'm going to use the other shade on the other eye. This time start with the left hand on the left side. Whoops. And then the right side. Right to left. Both together. And then again, just to make sure I'm relaxed, I shall let my eyes close. <sighs> let my body be relaxed. Just take a moment to regroup. Okay, so that's the balancing technique. Oh, hang on, I'll just finish by doing it with both eyes open. And rest again. And then when I'm feeling really rested I can go back to the tubes and try out whether when I move the ends of the tubes together the cut-off point is the same as it was last time or whether it's a different point. <laughs> 